Hi everyone. In this video, I want to talk to you about how you can calculate the expected return of individual stock returns and then also the variance of those stock returns. And uh, if you can calculate variance, you can also calculate standard deviation, which is simply the square root of variance. These calculations are very, very important because they will help lay the foundation for you to understand the relationship between the rate of return that you can expect from an investment and the risk associated with that investment. You know, whenever you're investing in a stock, there is always some risk involved in the sense that in the future, the rate of return that you will earn on that stock could be high or it could be low. And that may very well be because, say, in the future, the economy might be doing really good or really bad. So there are different possibilities in the future. And if somebody asks you today, OK, today, what is the rate of return that you're expecting going forward? You have to account for all those possibilities and then also the probabilities of those possibilities. And variance is our way of capturing how the actual return can deviate from that expected. And the more that deviation is, the more we say is the risk associated with that investment. And so knowing how to calculate expected return and how to calculate variance is the first step towards understanding the very, very important relationship between risk and expected return in finance. So here is an example in Excel to help you understand how you can calculate expected return and variance of individual stock returns. So suppose that you're living in a world in which there are just two stocks, say super tech and slow-mo. Now you're considering investing in these stocks and you know, based on research that you've done that next year, super tech can either have negative 37 percent return or negative 11 percent or 14 percent or 30 percent depending on what the state of the economy might be going forward so you're given the different states of the economy or states of the world that can exist in the future the probabilities of these happening and then what will be the returns on super tech in these different states of the world. You are given the same information for slow-mo stocks. So if somebody asks you, what is the expected return on super tech? If you are here at time period zero going forward, what is the expected return? Then all you have to do is account for the different returns that can happen and the probabilities with which they would happen. It would be a much simpler question if somebody said, oh, there's an equal chance that a depression will happen or a recession will happen or a normal state will happen or a boom will happen, because then you would say, you know what? The returns on super tech will be either negative 37 percent or negative 11 or 14 or 30. They're equally likely. So you could simply take an average, like do some of these four numbers divided by four. End of story. You could do that, but that won't work if the probabilities are not the same for different outcomes. So the way you calculate expected return is that you simply take sort of like a weighted average of these returns where the weights are the probabilities. So negative 37% is not very likely. There's only a 5% chance that that will happen. So you say, okay, equal to 5% and multiply it by negative 37 percent so i'm assigning a weight of like just five percent to this negative 37 percent however i can also get 11 percent with 25 percent probability so multiply negative 11 percent by 25 percent or i can get 14 percent with 40 percent probability so multiply 40 percent with 14 right here and then finally you say or 30 percent multiplied by 30% right here. And so basically what you're doing is that you're taking a product of these two numbers and then these two numbers and then these two numbers and then these two numbers. And, two numbers. and once you've taken these four products, you're summing them up. It turns out that in Excel, there is precisely a function called sum product. What do you know? It takes the product of different cells and then sums them up. So if you invoke this function, it'll ask you, give me array one. Array one is basically this column one right here. And then it says, okay, give me array two. Array two is basically these returns right here. When you will close the parentheses, 
Excel will literally take the product of this cell and this cell, then this cell and this cell, then this and this, and then this and this, and then it will sum them all up. And so if you do this, you will get the same 10%. So I can do the same thing here for slow-mo. This is equal to sum product. And then again, I do probabilities, which is my array one, and then the returns for slow-mo, which is array two. And when I do that, I get 5% on stats. Now, in order to calculate the variance, we need to understand how the individual returns are deviating from the mean. But we also need to be mindful that each individual deviation happening depends on the probability of the state of the world. So for super tech, the first thing that I'm going to do is take a look at how if a depression happens, how the return in the depression is deviating from the expected. Well, that's a simple exercise. I hope you can see that. It's simply saying, look, do equal to, take a look at negative 37% and how that is deviating from the expected return of 10%. And so these then are the deviations from the mean for super tech. I can do the exact same calculation for slow-mo. So again, equal to, in a depression, slow-mo is going to yield negative 9%. How much is that deviating from slow-mo's expected return? Basically, negative 9 minus 5%. So now I have the individual deviations from the mean for both these stocks. Step number two is to calculate squared deviations. This is a rather simple exercise because all you have to do is do equal to, you take the individual deviation and you simply raise it to the power of two because you're squaring it. So that's it. Just do this and now you can copy this and paste it this way. And so now you've calculated squared deviations for both super tech and slow-mo. We call the variance formula now. The variance formula simply says, take the probability of an outcome and multiply it by the square deviation that you're going to see in that outcome. And then you do it for the second outcome, the third outcome, the fourth outcome, and then you sum it all up. That sounds like some product, doesn't it? It absolutely does. And it is. So you do equal to some product. And again, you're taking the probabilities, but this time, you are multiplying them by the square deviations of super tech. So really that simple. And now if you do that, you get 3.47%. You can do the exact same exercise with the slow-mo returns. So again, take the probabilities, multiply them by the square deviations for slow-mo, and that's it. Sum them all up. So 0.68%. Once you have the variance, standard deviation calculation is rather easy. All you got to do is say equal to SQRT, that stands for square root. And in that, you can simply give the cell reference to the variance number right here. And lo and behold, you get the standard deviation, which is 18.63% for super tech. If I copy this and paste it here, you get 8.27% for slow-mo. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning!